Hello once again everybody, this is Jay with another Linux Commands for Beginners video. And in this video we're going to take a look at transferring files from one Linux machine to another. So you will need two Linux instances for this video. It doesn't matter if they're both virtual machines, one physical, one virtual, both cloud instances, one cloud instance, um, it really doesn't matter. So long as you have two Linux machines to work from. And then I'll show you examples of copying files from one server to the other. We're going to use the Secure Copy Protocol, or SCP, to achieve that in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. So here on my terminal, I have a shell open from my local workstation, or my local laptop. You can see my customized prompt with the cute little unicorn right here. And this is where my local files are that I'm going to copy to another instance. It doesn't really matter what you copy. I'm going to show you a few examples here, but you can go ahead and use whatever files you'd like. So I recently recorded a video on RetroPie, which is a very awesome distribution and also application that you can run on your Linux installation on a laptop or a desktop to play some retro games. And I have all those files still on my laptop, so I'm going to use those as an example. Again, it doesn't really matter what you use. So if I list storage on my home directory here, I have all kinds of folders here. And the one I'm interested in is this RetroPie folder. I'm gonna go ahead and go in there. And you can see I have a ROMs directory. Inside there, I have a bunch of folders for various emulated games that are supported by RetroPie. I'm going to use NES as an example. So if I go into the NES folder, I have a bunch of files here. So I made my text really big here, so some of these names are gonna be wrapped. I'm sorry about that, but the name of these games doesn't really matter because the type of content doesn't really matter. The whole point is to show you guys how to transfer files. It doesn't really matter what files you use. Those files are just what I have available at the time. So as an example, I'm going to copy this file and I'll just do an LS against it. A game called Yoshi for the NES. We see that file is right here. It's 257 kilobytes. That's the file that I'm going to transfer. Now over here in another tab, I have an Ubuntu instance on Linode. Again, it doesn't matter where it is, you just need to have access to it. If I do IP space A, my IP address for this instance is going to be this one right here. I'm going to need to know that to copy a file or a folder over to this instance. Now currently, I have nothing. So if I go back here to my local instance, what I'm going to do is SCP, Secure Copy Protocol, and that comes from the SSH package. So if you have the SSH client installed, you should already have that installed as well. So you should already have this command. The file that I wanna copy, again, is yoshi.nes, and I wanna copy it to, I'll put in the username and then at, that's the IP address, and I'll put a colon, slash home, slash j. So let me break this down for you. SCP, Secure Copy Protocol, that's the tool we're gonna to use to transfer the file. The file we want to transfer is this one, yoshi.nes. The user we want to use for this transfer is my user, j, at the IP address of the server that's going to receive the file, colon, and then the path on that server where the file is gonna ultimately be copied to. I'll press enter. It's gonna ask for my password, which I'll put in and it copied it over. Since NES files are very small, then of course that's going to copy pretty quick. So if I go back over here to my server, you can see that I do have that file here, yoshi.nes, that is present, that was not there before. Back here at the local session, I'm going to recall that command. Again, there it is, and now here, I'm going to remove the file. You see that it's not there anymore. I'm gonna copy it back. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to shorten this down a little bit. I'm going to leave off my name, at, and just have the IP address. Because if you are logged in as the user you wanna copy the file with, you don't need to include the username. You only need to include the username 
if the user on the other end is different than the user on your local session. So in this case, I just need the IP address. And what I can also do is I could take off the path. So I'm not even going to tell it where I want to copy the file to. So let's just see what happens if I leave the path off of the command. Put in the password again. And I copied it. So let's see what happened. My working directory is slash home slash j. And there's the file. So how did it know to copy it to that directory, to my home directory? Well, actually, if you don't give it a path, then it's going to assume your home directory is where you want to put it. So you only actually need to include a path if where you want to transfer the file is in a different location than your home directory. Now, I'm going to go back a directory here. And I want to copy the entire NES directory over to that other server. So here's what I'm going to do. SCP, I'm going to use dash R for recursive because I want to copy everything underneath a particular folder. And that's the folder I want to copy, the NES folder. And again, I want to copy it to this IP address. I'm not going to put my username here again because I'm logged in as the same user. And I'm going to use a colon because, you know, we'll just put it in the home directory. I'm not going to designate a place. So I'll press enter, type the password, and it's going to copy everything over there. And as I go, I could do, I could go into the NES directory, which is now there. You can see that it's basically going to have a bunch of files. That's going to change a bit as I ls, as it copies additional files. It's not necessarily going to go in alphabetical order. But it is copying everything over there. As you can see, it's copying my entire NES ROM library over to that other server. As you can see here, they're all present. And again, that was the NES directory that I copied over. I'll go back here. And what I'm going to do is go back to my home directory. So now I'm in my home directory. Now, one thing you should know is that SCP also works in reverse, believe it or not. So I could do SCP, I'll type the IP address, and I did copy the yoshi.nes file into my home directory on the other server. As you can see, if I do ls, well actually it's still here, you see yoshi.nes. And here we, what we're going to do is try to copy the file from that server over to my local workstation. So I'll put a period, which is basically the current working directory. I just want to copy it where I am right now, and I'll press enter. Put in the password, and it actually copied the yoshi.nes file from the remote end to the local end, so it actually works in reverse as well. So that's basically it. There's more you can do with the SCP command. There's other options I can give you, but I'll leave it up to you to check the man page. For example, you could designate a port for the other side. SSH runs on port 22, which is assumed if you don't designate a port. If the SSH server is running on a different port on the server itself, you'll have to designate that. I'll leave it up to you to check the man page to find out what option you would use to achieve that. But I basically showed you how to copy a file and a folder from one instance to another. I hope that was helpful for you guys. I know it might be strange to copy ROM files, but it's what I had. I just wanted to show you guys how that process worked. And in the next video, I'm going to show you basically the same exact thing again, but we're going to use the rsync command to achieve this, which is another method of copying files from one Linux instance to another. And I should have that uploaded very soon, so stay tuned. Thanks for checking out my video. I really appreciate it. If you found it useful, click that like button. And if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe so you'll see the latest content as soon as it becomes available. If you want to help me out, there's links down below for my Patreon page, as well as links for purchasing my Linux books and also my affiliate store, which has a listing of Linux compatible hardware that I've actually tested personally. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.